Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemin TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. What a lovely day everyone and here is Asia News for today. Cambodian government decides will mix vaccine for COVID-19 booster vaccines. Prime Minister Hun Sen says Cambodia starts vaccinating its population aged 12 to 17. He adds the country will begin offering a booster shot against COVID-19, switching between AstraZeneca and Chinese vaccines in an effort to stop the spread of coronavirus. They came to get vaccinated, first to follow the order of the government, second we get this vaccination for free and we will stop the COVID-19 infection and one day in the future COVID may disappear, then I can be free from wearing a face mask. The vaccination for the Southeast Asian countries' younger population is on a voluntary basis. Kim hopes if everyone gets the vaccine, can bring the country back to normal life. I came to get vaccinated today in the hope that by doing this, we can make our people, our country, go back to normal life and also so that businesses go back to normal in order to make the country's economy prosper in the future. Hun Sen notes the third vaccine dose will be offered to between 500,000 to 1 million frontline workers as a priority. Cambodia launches a lockdown in eight provinces bordering Thailand this week in a bid to prevent the spread of the Delta variant of the coronavirus in the Southeast Asian country. The World Health Organization says that this week the Delta variant has been detected amongst migrants returning from Thailand through land borders and now in the local community. Cambodia managed to largely contain the virus for most of last year, but an outbreak first detected in late February has driven up total cases to 77,919 with 1,420 deaths. A group of cyclists gives free delivery to an isolated COVID-19 patient at home in Semarang. A small group of volunteer cyclists running free errands for people in the city of 3 million, which along with the rest of the country has been hit hard by the pandemic. Arhaman Surya Atmaja and another cyclist stop at the pharmacy to pick up some vitamins for a person self-isolating from the coronavirus before hitting the road once again to make the delivery. Indonesia has become Asia's COVID-19 epicenter with record infections and deaths in July. Total infection has surpassed 3.2 million including almost 87,000 deaths. In Samarang alone, officials have reported more than 79,000 cases and 5,800 deaths. Arhaman adds, delivering medicines or vitamins are the most common request, which he picks up via WhatsApp or Instagram. Once though, he affirms, he ended up unknowingly making a delivery to a hospital ICU ward, a situation he tries to avoid. I get scared, but my feelings go away when I remember I only want to help. The group hit a peak of about five orders per day earlier, but Arahman says the average now is two deliveries a week. Resident Anki Mahendra, who was helping his self-isolating neighbor, says he hopes the number of volunteers increases to reach more people. He also hopes that this pandemic will end soon. Two Sumatran tigers recover from the coronavirus pandemic after being treated for 12 days. The Jakarta government in a statement says two Sumatran tigers at an Indonesian zoo are recovering from COVID-19 after they tested positive in mid-July, adding that authorities are trying to find out how they were infected. 
The statement says Tino, a 9-year-old tiger, and Harry, a 12-year-old, were tested for coronavirus after both showed flu-like symptoms, had trouble breathing and lost their appetite. Official says the tigers had undergone around 10 to 12 days of treatment and were gradually showing signs of recovery and their appetites have returned and were back to being active. They says none of the caretakers and workers had tested positive with coronavirus around the time the animals were infected. Indonesia has suffered the worst coronavirus infection in Southeast Asia with over 3.4 million infections and more than 94,000 deaths since the start of the pandemic. Malaysian protesters called Prime Minister to step down from his position after failing to deal with coronavirus pandemic. Over 100 people gather in the center of Malaysian capital Kuala Lumpur, expressing dissatisfaction with the government's handling of the coronavirus pandemic and calling on Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin to quit. Protesters carry black flags and hold up placards and marched as police watched. Testing the government. This is uh, this government has been incompetent, has been blunder, full of blunders, and we need to do something about it. And this is what we can do. Well, I'm here today because I'm sick of sitting at home and nothing changing, and the numbers getting worse. And not gonna lie, I was afraid of coming here today because we hear of all this police intimidation and what they're doing to all these activists, and they're horrible. But I thought if I come here today, it means I'm serious about something. It means that. I'm taking a stand means that I mean what I say, which is that I want a government that is accountable, transparent. Public anger over the rising number of COVID-19 infections, despite months-long lockdowns, a national state of emergency that has been in place since January to curb the spread of the coronavirus. The emergency is said to expire except in the state of Sarawak, where it will be extended to stop regional elections amid the pandemic. The country reports 17,786 cases, a new daily record, bringing the total of cases since the start of the pandemic to 1,113,272. Muhyiddin faced calls from the opposition and the biggest bloc in the ruling coalition to resign after a rare rebuke by the king over the government's handling of emergency ordinances. China provides 315 million doses of vaccine to Belt and Road Initiative countries. A foreign ministry spokesperson says China delivers 350 million doses of vaccines to co-sponsors of the Initiative for Belt and Road Partnership on COVID-19 Vaccines Cooperation. The spokesperson in a press release says that Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi chaired the Asia and Pacific High-Level Conference on Belt and Road Cooperation this year. During the meeting, China and 28 countries jointly launched the Initiative for Belt and Road Partnership on COVID-19 Vaccines Cooperation, calling for stronger cooperation in vaccine assistance, exports and joint production. The spokesperson says China has been actively implementing the initiative and reached cooperation agreements with co-sponsors of the initiative on a total of 775 million doses of vaccines, including in the form of concentrates, of which 350 million doses have been delivered. He adds, Chinese companies have started joint production with four co-sponsors of the initiative and are discussing joint production with other interested countries. China stands ready to carry forward the efforts with Belt and Road partners to promote the equitable distribution of vaccines globally and increase vaccine accessibility and affordability in Belt and Road countries as well as other developing countries. Vietnam extends lockdown in 18 other cities and provinces in the midst of coronavirus cases increase in the country. The government says Vietnam extends strict curbs on movement in its business hub Ho Chi Minh City and another 18 cities and provinces throughout its south for two weeks to help combat its worst COVID-19 outbreak. After successfully containing the virus for much of the pandemic, Vietnam is facing a rapid spread of infections that has led to movement restrictions in around one-third of the country. 
It has registered a total of 145,000 cases and 1,306 deaths, 85% of which were recorded over the past month. Ho Chi Minh City is currently Vietnam's epicenter, accounting for 64% of the country's total infections. The city recorded its first death from COVID-19 on June the 2nd, but its total deaths reached 1,164 on Saturday. Data from Ho Chi Minh City centers for disease control and prevention showed. In addition, in the capital Hanoi in the north, where a lockdown order will expire next week, authorities were considering the extension of current restrictions. Vietnam has a population of 98 million and has so far administered over 5.9 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine, but only around 589,000 people have been fully inoculated. Thailand uses containers to store COVID-19 victims after hospitals are exceeded with COVID-19 deaths. A Thailand hospital morgue, overwhelmed by COVID-19 deaths, has begun storing bodies in refrigerated containers. Thailand reports a daily record of 18,912 new cases and a record of 178 new deaths, bringing the total accumulated cases to 597,287 and 4,857 fatalities. At the Thammasat University Hospital near the capital Bangkok, a 10 freezer morgue usually handles a seven autopsies a day. But the latest wave of the coronavirus pandemic now has to deal with more than 10 bodies daily. Almost 20% of the bodies from outside the hospital that are being brought in with unidentified causes of death were testing positive for COVID-19. That is why the freezer in the hospital's morgue does not have enough space anymore. He adds, almost 20% of bodies with an unidentified causes of death later tested positive for COVID-19, overwhelming the morgue and medical staff. Before the pandemic, emergency rescue volunteers were the ones who would normally pick up the bodies from the morgue. But now, the volunteers are busy transporting COVID-19 victims. There is also a limited number of people willing to transport those who were infected with COVID-19, either bodies or victims. According to Paruhat, there are several bodies keeping one container at Tamasat University Hospital, waiting to be retrieved by their relatives. Hospitals in Bangkok and surrounding provinces are running out of capacity due to the surge in infections. Myanmar army ruler pledges elections after six months coup in the country. <laughs> Myanmar's military ruler, Ming Oh Leng, again promises new multi-party elections, says his government is ready to work with any special envoy named by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. He speaks in a televised address six months after the army seized power from a civilian government after disputed elections won by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi's ruling party, which he described as terrorist. ASEAN foreign ministers are to meet, a diplomat says, they aim to finalize a special envoy tasked with ending violence and promoting dialogue between the junta and its opponents. The army seized power on February 1st coup from the civilian government led by Aung San Suu Kyi after her ruling party won elections that the military arced were tainted by fraud. The country's electoral commission dismissed this allegation. South Korea pledges cooperation with ASEAN members to fight against SARS-CoV-2. South Korean Foreign Minister Chung eun yong pledges that South Korea will work with ASEAN countries to overcome the pandemic. Chung calls for strong global solidarity and cooperation to fight against COVID-19 in his opening remarks for a virtual ministerial meeting between South Korea and the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations. In order to overcome the pandemic and create a better future, the Republic of Korea will work together with ASEAN members fully investing in the priorities set out in the New Southern Policy Plus 
aligning them with the objectives of the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework. Chung is scheduled to join other virtual ASEAN meetings, including an ASEAN Plus 3 meeting with China and Japan and the ASEAN Regional Forum that North Korea might participate. Filipinos excited to receive vaccines to fight COVID-19 in the country. Chaos and confusion hit several vaccination sites in the Philippine capital region after thousands show up at centers hoping to score a shot before the Metro Manila head backs to a two-week lockdown. The strictest quarantine restrictions will take effect in the capital region of 16 cities and home to 13 million people to limit people's mobility as the threat of the virulent Delta variant persists. Residents who queued night jostled for vaccination slots amid fear that they will not be allowed to leave home for work if they are not vaccinated. Official clarifies that people do not need to be vaccinated and will be allowed to work if they are in essential business sectors. Metro Manila Council Chief Benjamin Abalo says the frenzy of people rushing to some vaccination sites was also sparked by rumors on social media that they will not receive government assistance if they were not vaccinated. Last month, President Rodrigo Duterte ordered village chiefs to prevent people in their communities who refused to be vaccinated from leaving home. A rise in COVID-19 infections driven by the highly transmissible Delta variant have started filling up hospital beds in the capital, with more than 1.6 million coronavirus cases and more than 28,231 deaths. The Philippines has the second worst outbreak in Southeast Asia after Indonesia. Well, that's the end for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a nice weekdays.